Hello and welcome everyone to High School Musical 3 Revengeance. Um, Wait, no, I don't, some of you guys. <laughs> I don't know if that one is going to stick. What? We'll have to try something. No, I mean, I mean uh, what? we'll figure it out we'll, eventually. We'll, 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 workshop we'll workshop the name. Yeah. Um, some of you guys may know me as Alpha. I play with them in Minecraft a lot. Um, but today I will be the DM for these wandering heroes. Uh, how about you guys... Uh, Introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about who you're playing. You go first, awesome. Chris. You're above me, so it makes more sense to go oh, down. Am I above? Yeah. Hi, Austin. Hi. Uh, well, my name is Chris, uh, also known as Ox, and I will be playing as Mooney Sanders, uh, a rock no monk uh, who. Really formerly studied though. under a a monastery uh and yes as cj said has a very <laughs> thick fantasy southern accent uh, what <laughs> he hails from you know what would be in in this region's equivalent of uh you know kentucky i hate you mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> Uh, he, he is no longer studying under that monastery. He was kicked out. Um, he's a very inquisitive man. And for better or for worse, that does get him in a lot of situations. Um, he now seeks for knowledge uh, more frequently in taverns than in, in libraries now. So, yeah. Nice. And John. What's up? I'm Austin slash Parfait, and I'm playing... John Bloodstone, who he has a very dark past that he's not proud of, and he is a rogue demon hunter. I don't know what else you want. Uh, I didn't. Fair I enough. forgot to do this prep that CJ yeah. told us to, so I didn't yeah. think of this. Think of this. <laughs> no, <was> no worries. <laughs> it, it, I, I have like it, a you have. I have a three-page given... backstory. I can yeah. read. you want me to read that? Yeah. I mean, I'll pull it up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll we'll get into that stuff as we're going along. Also, if there's any real things quick, that hate you to cut you get. off, but because we are a mm -hmm. Twitch stream, I do want to thank Monkey Thunder for the Prime sub. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't taken, so that's the name. <laughs> yeah, well, High School Musical Three: The Revengeance. Yeah, it exactly. Maybe the title for this show going forward. Might Possibly. be. <laughs> definitely possible all right but so is everyone ready yeah is all right all ever be. <laughs> so, without further ado our story begins outside of a town nestled in a misty valley the wind blows cold in the air the rains pounding down soaks you to the bone john we're gonna start with you all right you were traveling along a long dirt road following the whispers you'd heard in a tavern about a supposed monster that ruled over these lands. You'd nearly stopped to camp for the night when the rain began to fall and followed quickly by this strange fog. You're not quite sure why, but you sense something evil about it. I sense something evil about this fog. Mm-hmm. And it seems to follow you. And it's Always never me. more than a few steps behind you. A few steps behind me, even. Mm hmm And it threatens to envelop you every time that you stop. It's threatening to envelop me every time yeah. I stop. With little other choice, you hurry down the long path in front of you towards a dimly lit village in the distance. Well, I have no other choice. I guess I'll go to that dimly lit village down this path. All right, Mooney. Uh, you are also traveling around, along a uh, long dirt road leading to the village. Um, despite the freezing cold, the alcohol in your system is keeping you a bit warm. As it does. Uh, you had kind of hoped to spend this night in a tavern, maybe? Um, but when you arrived at the nearest tavern, you found the door locked. Uh, you tried knocking, but you only got the response of a man on the inside who told you that he wouldn't be opening the door until the fog clears. And he warns you that you better run. Because those who go out at night in the fog don't ever return. 
And it's that when you noticed the fog closing in around you as well. You grab your gear and you hurry along to the nearest place you hoped might give you shelter. The small Stand village up. of Barovia. You both happen along the edge of town around the same time. And the fog is now very close by, nearly enveloping you. You're both shivering from the rain as you walk past the village gates, when suddenly the fog seems to rapidly pick up the pace and envelops you entirely. That evil presence that you felt from the fog is much stronger now, and you swear that you can hear breathing at the back of your neck. What do you do? Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> I was gonna say I'd like to make a perception check. Right. Absolutely. I, I checked my wisdom stat <laughs> and I thought twice about it. But I guess you never I'll know go for it anyways. Alright. Let's see. Bring up the old boy. And go ahead and throw down the old oh. There we go. Let's see what you got. Perception check. All right. Um, so you're looking around through the fog. Are you looking specifically for the source of the breathing, or are you looking just for anything in particular to guide yourself? Um, I am looking more particularly for the source of breathing. Okay. Um, you turn around, you search around the fog. The fog is now so close that you can barely see your hand when it's outstretched in front of your face. Um, but you sort of like reach around, you feel around trying to reach out with your senses as you learned uh, in the monastery, but you can't find a presence. And yet that breathing still seems to linger almost in the back of your mind. Hmm. Fascinating. Is John doing anything? I mean, he probably should be, but you know, Austin's stupid. <laughs> I guess I'll also do a perception check. Okay. Which is also going to be bad. Are you also checking for the source of the breathing, or are you checking for something else? I'm checking for, like, a way... An open... like a, Some sort of building that seems like I might be able to get to it and t get away from this fog. Oh, yeah. Through the fog? Yeah. Surprisingly enough, you think you see a light in the distance. Sort of out in front of you, you see a, a pale yellow light. You think it might be coming from uh, maybe a fireplace inside. It seems like it, it might be no more than maybe 30 feet away. Did you, uh, real quick, just a question. Did Have me and, me and Mooney here, we've seen each other, right? Not, you have not, bumped into each okay. other. Okay. Um, you are in the same place geologically but uh well, we don't know you are, the fog is now very dense mm -hmm. and you guys probably weren't very Oops. close at the time okay. Okay. obscuring us from each other hmm. um, all right but you are aware he was there if you wanted to like call out to him or try to help him find his way as well okay hey stranger there's a light this way come on oh huh. who said that where are you <laughs> N name's john all right, John. I, I suppose I have no other choice. It's either that or die right. out here. You make the choice. You know what? That's a a tough tough decision to make, but I think I will pick living with you. Uh, I guess I'll make another perception check to see if I can. I'm, <laughs> or, I'm or do I need you, to? Is this passive no, perception? No, this. You were, you guys are close enough, um, and okay. you guys were aware of where each other was. You guys haven't moved from your starting positions all that much, so you know which direction the voice came from, and you can kind of follow that along until you find John. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll follow his voice. Yep. Yeah, so you're able to follow that along, and John, I assume you're heading straight towards that light? Yes. Once you know that Mooney is following you? Mm -hmm. So you head off that direction, and the light seems to grow a little brighter and brighter, um, and you start to feel almost 
it, you are almost certain you feel eyes on you. A uh, sort of almost familiar presence, but not familiar in a good way. Now, is this familiar to just John, or is this familiar to Moody as well? To, to just John. Okay. John, in your experience, you feel some evil presence seems to be watching you in the fog. Um, well, I think at that point, my my instinct would be to try to maybe fall into the shadows a little bit. Okay, so you're going to you're going to move away from the light. Oh, I guess that's fair. Uh, <laughs> mm. Is there a way to like? Uh, would there be a way to like approach the light through the shadows though, like away from maybe the main road a little bit? Um, right now, you can't really see much of anything. Fair. It's overcast. It's uh, pretty much the dead of night. Um, pretty much everywhere is shadow that mm. isn't this light. Gotcha. Mm. I think maybe I think I might we whisper might to need him to pick up that, our hey, there's some eyes on us, but we should... I don't... Now, Austin doesn't know what to do, but uh, I'm going to say I'm going to keep going towards the light because I think it's my only option. So... Okay. Um, so you guys carry on forward towards the light. I assume Mooney follows? Oh, of course. Okay. You guys carry on towards the light, and soon your hands are reaching and hitting a iron gate that seems to be standing ajar. Ah. Well, they left the gate open for us. How kind of them. They must uh, have known you kind stranger. Yeah, I, I go inside the gate. All right. Yeah, you're able to open it. It opens with a loud creaking noise, and you it's really oil follow. This thing sometimes. I you follow the along gate, the. So. <laughs> yeah, you follow along the cobblestone path that leads to some stone steps. As you sort of climb up to them, the fog seems to almost halt at the doorway. Just right against you guys. Do you hmm. try to go into the building? It does seem like the door is open. Ooh. Hmm. So the door is open, you said? <laughs> yes. The door is open. Um, it looks like it opens into a foyer, um, or <clears throat> probably more of a mudroom is the more accurate term. It seems like there's a couple of Coats hanging up, some uh, boots, uh, various different uh, cold weather gear hanging up in this area. Um, and there is a large set of wooden double doors that lead into the next uh, area uh, of, of what you would assume to be the rest of the house. Mooney looks back to John. Uh, and he says, Well, uh, an open door to an ominous and empty house, you know. Never led to anything bad, right? I mean, he gives him a, a nervous smirk. I welcome, I welcome whatever we find, and I walk in. Well, all right, fair enough. You guys find yourselves in this for you. Um, the doors in front of you are closed, um, but you can tell beneath the the gap in the doors, that there is the light of what seems to be a fireplace. Definitely uh, appealing to you guys with how frigid and soaking wet you are currently. Fair enough. Well, would you look at that, dude? John, was it? Yes, John. What's your name, by the way? Oh, yeah. I haven't introduced myself. My name is Mooney. Full name is Moonsong, but you can you can call me Mooney. I don't know you well enough to let you know my whole name. You can know me as John. Oh, that wasn't my full name. <laughs> oh, I won't give you my, my family name. But, you know, it's not really relevant at the moment. Anywho, it looks like we're not the only people here. You see that fireplace? Yes. I, that's why we walked this way. It was the light of the fireplace. I think we should investigate further. Maybe there's somebody that 
you know, might uh, enlighten us as to what this incredibly dense and strange fog is. Don't see any other options. I like the way you think. Uh, All right, so you guys carry on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so you guys carry on going through those two doors, and you guys come upon an interesting scene. You see a sort of older, silver-haired man with a dagger raised towards a heavily armored tiefling. Oh. The man appears like he might be in his mid-40s. Uh, his hair probably was black in his younger years, based on a little salt and pepper he's got going on on it. Um, and he currently has the front of his leather armor undone, revealing a large star shape seemingly branded onto his chest. And he glances briefly in your guys' direction before turning back to the tiefling. The tiefling has her back to you, but based on your posture, she seems more annoyed rather than threatened by the man holding the dagger. Um, despite that, you do notice that her hand is resting near her blade, um, but it seems more like a precautionary. Uh, the man calls out to you guys. Watch out, boys. This demon may look like a dream, but she's as much of a devil as any other. He gestures to the star on his chest. I'd know. What? She asks, looking back at you guys. And then she turns back to him. I have no quarrel with any of you. My purpose is to rid this place of the evil that haunts it. Someone said evil that haunts it. Uh, I like the sound of that. Uh, she, she sort of like looks back at you um, sort of appraisingly and then turns back to the the gentleman with the dagger um, and he's like it's almost cute demon pretending to be an exorcist I'm no more a demon than you are a monkey though clearly your thinking hasn't evolved much past that she sort of uh, nods to the stairs that the gentleman is standing near. Allow me to pass and I'll be on my way, and you can do whatever you'd like. There's no need for this to end in bloodshed. I mean, there's always a need for bloodshed. Well, now, 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 everybody, I think, and Mooney takes a flask from his hip and takes a sip. I think we could all benefit from taking a step back and calming down. Now, miss, you said something about slain evil. My newly acquired friend here seems to be in agreement. Now, I don't have much experience in, you know, slain evil or anything, but uh, I, I would be of the mind that, you know, slain evil is always easier in, in larger quantities you know, one not quite as beneficial as having all four of us. Thoughts? Uh, the the man kind of like he 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 laughs at that, uh, and he looks over at you and he's like, "What? You never cross them in your path in your past, old timer?" Well, as a matter of fact, I. Uh... These a... things are evil. Oh, these things? Uh, and he gestures to her with the dagger. Well, she may look like a demon, but it is purely only by her ancestors doing. I had a tiefling who served among me at the uh, monastery I used to serve at. This was a nice enough guy. <laughs> Uh, the tiefling kind of looks back at you and she she kind of nods. Uh, I appreciate that you're not in, as wild in your thoughts as this other one. I may be an alcoholic, but I am a learned man. 
I can assure you that. And she looks to you, John. Hello. You seem I trained think... in combat. I've had a lot of experience training. Never has much opportunity on the field, per se, but I'm prepared to do what must be done. If you're willing to fight the evils in this place, then I'm willing to stand by your side. However, it seems this other one does not wish us to carry on with our business. She sort of looks back at the uh, the man by the stairs. Will you allow us to pass, or are you just going to stand there with the knife all day? He, he kind of looks uh, between you guys and her, uh, kind of realizing that he doesn't have an ally in this fight anymore. Um, and he, uh, he seems to sort of mutter under his breath for a moment and tucks the dagger away. It's like, go on, get yourself killed. You seem like a very knowledgeable man. You know what dangers are here. It seems like we might need your help. You seem very knowledgeable according to the way you're talking. Yeah, I've been here before. Well, I haven't. This place is... I don't is... believe my friends have. I think someone with knowledge might be helpful. Yeah, I'm not going any... Any sort of stops for a moment. And you see almost a strange flicker of golden light appear behind his eyelids for a moment. And then he sighs. Well, I guess you get your wish. He he looks towards the uh, tiefling. The lady says you get to live. The, the lady? <laughs> I'm glad she thinks that way. Uh, yeah. Much thanks to the lady. Well, if we're gonna do business together, what's y'all's names? Oh yeah, I'm John. I am Valera. Howdy, James. And you, man? Uh, he he said James. Oh, were you talking to her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I th I thought you said man. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Valia. I do appreciate your willingness. There's not many people around here who would be as eager to go into this place if they knew what was in it. Well, to be quite frank, it beats what's outside, which is a, a fog that was breathing down my neck. <laughs> and uh, Fog? Uh, yeah. you, see, you see sort of James kind of respond to that, and he, he immediately sort of runs past you guys to the door and looks outside. It's like, God. Uh, everything okay oh. out there, James? <laughs> well, it looks like we're trapped in here until that decides to clear up. Wonderful. <laughs> well, Anyone care for a drink to take the edge off? <laughs> evil to slay while we're here. Oh, right, that. <laughs> Yeah. Lady sent me here. Told me that what happened in this place. Said that it needed to be cleansed. Oh. Sounds fun. Yeah, it's a blast. What a. Um, he, if you're what offering a, a drink to him, he will take it. Oh. <laughs> like... Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I offer my flask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, James will take a swig of it and hand it back to you. Anyone else? And I, I, I you know, look to everyone and I, yeah, ask, uh, yeah. Offer up Leah the will will decline politely. Like fair enough. I, I'll wait I need to my see sense. if it affects James at all. Make sure it's not tainted. Well, I am a little hurt, but I do understand. <laughs> You know, maybe I'll ask again in two hours if we are still alive. 
Well, I mean... So what are you guys here for? Uh... Well, I was kind of just here looking, you know, for another tavern when this fog kind of rolled up on us and and I got lost and then this kind gentleman here called out to me and helped me through the fog. Why are you here? Well, like I said, place needed to be cleansed. Lady won't let me walk the other way. Hmm. And you, Valia? Well, it seems my task is the same as his, though he'd seem loath to admit it. I have a vested interest in taking care of these beasts. Ah. Well? I just finished up demon hunter training and just thought it'd be fun. Well, hopefully you're right. And we don't lose our lives. <laughs> Hopefully it is fun. I mean, if we do, we do. Fair enough, I suppose. Uh, well, it seems we all have a common interest in clearing up whatever it is here that's afflicting this town. Would anybody know how we should get started in doing that? <laughs> I heard a little about this place before I came. Supposedly there was a family of cultists who lived here. Their dark rituals seem to have made the house somewhat evil itself. Uh, James kind of butts in. He's like, yeah, got pretty much that gist. But whatever's haunting this place, it's powerful. Apparently this place has been burned down several times, but just keeps getting back up. Hmm. Resilient. I'm guessing hey. whatever is in here we're going to find on the upper floors. Well. If there were evil in this lower floor, I think it would have attacked me by now. Hmm. And he, he kind of uh, peeks into this room down here, um, into what you guys can kind of see uh, appears to be maybe a hunting room, where you, like, display hmm. trophies. Um, but he sort of, like, looks over uh, you two, and he's like, But, you know, since it seems safe enough down here, you guys might as well dry yourselves off before we head anywhere. I've had enough point. Hmm. Has anyone searched the other rooms in this level? Mayhaps there's some things that we could make use of in our fight against this evil. <laughs> I'd only just arrived before he started threatening me. I didn't quite get a chance. Uh, and oh. she kind of she kind of casts an eye at James <laughs> uh -oh. as she says that. <laughs> My full side eye. <laughs> Uh, and he just kind of, uh, he, he doesn't quite say anything, but it's more of like a, uh, a uh, halfway between a groan and a sigh as he just kind of like walks into this room here. Oh, and that's the last we ever saw of James. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, that's the uh, spooky room. <laughs> uh, yeah, so where do you guys want to go? You guys, uh, since these are, um, just to sort of put in perspective for everyone else, these are DM NPCs, um, so they will answer questions when asked, um, but I'm going to try to avoid them leading the way too often, um, mm. so that you guys have a chance to explore on your own. Um, but they are here as resources if you have any questions, and they are also here for combat. Well, uh, Mooney's going to go ahead and dry himself off by the fire. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say we can take a... It, it won't really affect anything, um, but it will be a short rest by the fire. So about yeah. half an hour that you guys spend drying out your equipment, um, trying to get your clothes to not be soaked to the bone anymore, mm -hmm. um, and just get yourself in a much more comfortable state to be moving around the inside of a mansion, you know, 
not dripping all over the place. Wouldn't want to get any rashes while I'm moving around in my pants. Yes. That's fair. It is all too easy. <laughs> and mm. With the way that leather chaps were, you know, it's just leather armor is going to chafe. Like, oh, no, no. There's no gold down <laughs> back here. I mean, you I'm, don't have I'm a it, monk. Yeah. I don't have yeah. leather armor. No. <laughs> I'm wearing pants, <laughs> and, you know, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's asking a lot still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It certainly is, especially when they've been starched so that they'll remain fresh. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you guys spend your time warming up by the fire. Um, in the meantime, uh, Vela does seem like she goes around, uh, just kind of, she seems to almost be keeping watch. And after a little while, uh, James returns uh, into the main area and just kind of... He, he stands sort of in a corner. He seems to be keeping a close eye on mostly Vela, but also you guys as well. I mean, I am a man with alcohol in his system, so that's a fair enough assessment. <laughs> uh, that is fair, yeah. James, my friend, how'd you get your scar, if you don't mind us, me asking? <gasps> well... I was quite a gambler back in the day. Apparently, devils can disguise themselves. I lost an unfortunate bet with one. Earned this scar. Fair. Hmm. I've heard of many a monster that can hide in right in front of you. Yeah, I was... Younger and stupider. Ah, yes. I know what that's like. <laughs> Mooney, I'd, I'll take that drink now if you're still offering. Oh, of course. I take the flask from my hip no, and offer it to John. D4, you know, damage. I have bad kidneys. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> you are now heavily intoxicated. Oh, that would be so unfortunate. <laughs> At this level, yes. Later, sure, yeah. that could be funny. But now, who? Later, it would, yeah. yeah. Later, it would do nothing. But, uh, uh oh, yeah. I'm almost bloody. Yeah. Oops, bloody mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Uh. I would like to go, while they're having this conversation, mm -hmm. and while John's taking a sip from my flask, go investigate. Is that a kitchen I see up there? Yes. Oh, um, yeah, you, glorious. If uh, <laughs> you head on up there, you can absolutely do that. Um, you will notice that when you go that way, um, Vela does kind of seem to follow you and stay nearby. Um, That's perfectly all right by Mooney. <laughs> Yeah, it. If you want to give to do an insight check on that, you can. Um, but it's up to whether or not Mooney would actually care. <laughs> no, absolutely, he would not. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah, you can absolutely go into. Uh, you walk up into there, and you do see that it is a rather large and elaborate dining room. Uh, the centerpiece of it is this carved mahogany table. That's surrounded by eight high back chairs with beautifully sculpted armrest and cushioned seats. There's a crystal chandelier up overhead. Um, and all of the silverware seems to just be perfectly shined, it, like it was polished that morning. Wow. Uh, uh, if I had to guess, it's probably more of a Jack Daniels of the flask. Yeah, can, probably. You know, <laughs> yeah. Than sweet tea or Coke or Miller Lite. <laughs> we were uh, given a modern equivalent, probably more of a, yeah, you know, whiskey. <laughs> uh, Mooney is doing an investigation check to see if he can find any alcohol in the dining room. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually not hard to. Um, you, <laughs> it's, it's. Oh, wow. There's a there's a bottle of wine sitting right there on the table. Um, it's not hard for you to find. It's not like super hard stuff, but it seems like it's pretty old, so it might actually be kind of fancy wine. Yeah, he picks up um, the bottle and he looks at it and he stuffs it in his backpack. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was of... there. Yeah, was there anything else that he was looking for, or was that it? <laughs> that was all he was looking for. He said, <laughs> "Oh, this is a dining room. Alcohol." Yeah. Fair enough. All right. 
Um, and that is all he looked for. <laughs> yeah, and he comes back out. Well, um, so I what found what I was looking for in the dining room. Um, yeah, uh, is John doing anything? He's whittling. He has a little piece okay, of wood. So, okay, a little piece of wood he's whittling with his dagger. Yeah, so I will say that at this point you guys have dried oh, off okay. now. Um, so if you have anywhere that John wants to investigate or if he wants to suggest anything, he's more than welcome to do that. John's really into his whittling right now. He's he's, he's waiting for he's waiting for Mooney to get back and Mooney make make the decision. John's a, a follower. He'll follow Mooney's what Mooney wants. Yeah, yeah. I am a wise old man, but Mooney we definitely know that's not true. Does not have a super high wisdom. <laughs> hmm. Despite being a muck, uh, yeah. I so back was there? Room. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and I, you know, softly shout over to John, "Hey, can I have my flask back?" Mm-hmm. I close it and throw it to you. Why? Thank you. Alrighty. Well, folks, I say now that we're all dried off and. Calm down. What say we uh, start investigating this evil house? In- any uh, objections? Uh, I threw it really well, by the way. Oh, nice! <laughs> yeah, that, that was like you gave it like a perfect spiral yeah. on that. Like, <laughs> like perfect spiral. It went spinning. It landed right in his holster. Like <laughs> it looked really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just turned to catch it with my hip. Yeah. <laughs> monkey yeah, Thunder just, says that you like, are a, yeah. a cool monk. Skipped monk classes to drink under the bleachers. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, not quite, but you're on the right track. <laughs> yeah. He drank more than he learned monk stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So, I so. guess it seems like Mooney is the one taking the lead. Um, I will say at this point that Vela would suggest that we either carry on or try to look around for anything useful in this area. Well, or anything I, else it useful. Probably would be of, you know, the, the group's interest to see if there is anything else useful on this level, despite the fact that there is maybe not any evil on this level. I'd, I will admit I found some alcohol... <laughs> in the dining room. Granted, that was all I was looking for. However, it may not be the case that that is all that there is. Did you find uh, anything in the hunting room, James, when you were in there? Oh yeah, James. That's right. Uh, there was a cabinet over there. Uh, couldn't quite get it unlocked. Though. Well, huh, may I be, your, be at your service? Bring me to this cabinet and I will break into that bad boy. Yeah. He, uh, he leads you into the uh, the room. Because I have, and, I have uh, these tools. Yeah. Ah, sick. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, I don't uh, have those, so. Yep. So he, he leads you to uh, this cabinet right here. Okay. And he shows you the, the lock on it. Alright. Uh, that's a sleight of hand check, right? Um, it would actually be, um, since you have proficiency with thieves tools, you can actually just do thieves tools. And when it asks for a query, um, you would just select dex. It should ask you which uh, uh, which ability score to use. Okay. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. See, like I accidentally just rolled brewer supplies. <laughs> and we're saying I am proficient in it, though, right? You are proficient in that, yes, because okay. you have you are a thief. Or you're not a thief, you're a rogue, but yeah. Well, apparently I'm not that great at it. <laughs> um, no, that's perfectly fine. You unlocked it. Alright, cool. Um, so yeah, you click that lock open, um, and you pull that off of there. You open up the cabinets, and you find that it has a heavy crossbow, a light crossbow, and a hand crossbow, and a total of 60 bolts. Got some crossbows in here. Anyone want some crossbows? Well, I suppose uh, 
They're... They're not really my style. Me uh, neither, but I have this feeling that you might need them. <laughs> Just got uh, that gut feeling. James, James kind of like uh, looks over at you and he's like, no, really, I don't. And he fires off an Eldritch Blast into the wall. Oh, fair enough. He's a, a warlock. <laughs> I almost couldn't remember what that was. No. <laughs> I'm assuming you and James come out with the, yeah. the crossbows in yeah, hand. bring out all the crossbows and just drop them on the floor. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So uh, I assume you guys are going to divvy them out. Um, so James would not take one. He doesn't believe he needs one. Um, uh, Vela would uh, take one, but she'll wait until after you guys select what you want. What were they again? Which one? Uh, it was a heavy, light, and hand crossbow. I'm going to grab the hand so, crossbow. Yeah, the hand crossbow is one that can be used one-handed. Um, the It's specifically... I, I can't remember the... Uh, yeah, that one's light. Yeah, that's the difference. Um, yeah, the hand crossbow is one-handed and light. The light crossbow is one-handed. Uh, or two-handed, actually. It's not... Uh, and then the heavy crossbow is two-handed heavy. Mm. Uh, so I assume that you probably take the light crossbow, Mooney? Oh, correct. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. So she's going to go ahead and take that heavy crossbow then. I'm going to go ahead and add that to her inventory. Going to be a weapon. Um, and I assume you guys split the bolts so that you each get 20? Yeah. yeah. That's to me. All right. Cool. So you guys now all have 20 bolts. For your crossbows. Woohoo! Alright, time to make sure that I count those because normally I would not. <laughs> uh, Next. Yeah. World DM. Beautiful. Alright. Oh, so, what? Did he just uh, not bother with He just those? assumed we'd always go pick him up or something like that, which is, it's, either way is fair. It's not that hard. We have 20. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's only really an issue if you're like, like, I would only. If we yeah, crit exactly. fail 20 times, we're not going to have yeah. any crossbow bolts left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, what... Uh, so now that you guys have gotten your... Uh, have gotten your crossbows together, is there uh, anything that... you it, Did you guys want to investigate the other rooms? Or carry on upstairs? There are other rooms. Sure, there are I should probably investigate those. <laughs> okay, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can at, ver at the very least Actually, see that there's some storage closet here I mean, and what appears to be a kitchen over here. Real quick, I mean, I just, uh, while kitchen. I was in there, I would have probably done, like, can I, can we say I did an investigation roll to make sure there was nothing else in there? I'm sure there's not, but. Oh, yeah, okay. no, you can absolutely, it, it like, you can go back into there okay, and I'm do go that. Back in there so, like, it's not a huge issue. Yeah. Yeah. It, Regardless of when you, I'm did. not very <laughs> wise. So I was like, the second I came out, I was like, I should have looked for other things in that room. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Ooh, yeah. So you look around a little bit. Um, you do notice that the uh, the three stuffed wolves appear to be um, fairly large mm. um, for what you would assume to just be, like, a gray wolf. Um, so whoever must have taken them down must have either been really ballsy or <laughs> very powerful, mm. because these oh. seem like they might be... They, they might be much bigger than regular wolves. All right. Um, other than that, you don't find much. You do find that the, uh, the cabinet to your left uh, is, or rather probably be to john's right um yeah. but uh you do find a small box with uh a deck of playing cards an assortment of wine glasses um but you don't see much of anything else in i here. grab a wine glass to give to mooney all right <laughs> Woo! There very you go, cool yeah. i found you would never use a glass <laughs> yeah you uh you <laughs> come back out with a very ornate sort of crystalline uh wine wow. glass uh it seems to be sort of molded into the shape of a wolf's head, surprisingly enough. Um, seems fitting for the room it was in. Uh, and 
it's sort of the wine would pour into the wolf's mouth and kind of fill that up, and that would be the uh, the goblin itself. Fascinating. Was there more than one of those? Oh uh, yeah, I yeah. You one found. Myself too, then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say that there was. Yeah, I would say there's about like five of those that were in the box. I only grabbed two. I've only I've only felt a connection to Mooney so far. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, it seemed like Mooney was interested in checking out the kitchen. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So you said this is the kitchen over here. Nope. Uh, this is the kitchen over here. That is the kitchen. Yes. Um, and you do oh, see a oh, pantry back through, through, through this way. Do that? Uh, no, no. Uh, there's a doorway right here. Okay. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that. You can go through that no problem. Gotcha. You said there's a pantry. Uh, yes, right through this door. Excellent. I'm gonna check out the pantry. Okay. Um. Yeah, if you want to look around, you can either give an investigation or perception. Uh, it's not going to make a difference for me either way, so we'll investigate. Ooh! Ooh. That's a crazy uh, There are certainly things in the pantry. <laughs> you, you look around, uh, there's like cutting board and some utensils. There's a stove. Uh, wow. But, the, like, there's... There's no alcohol in here. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see any. I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, Mooney sighs softly uh, in disappointment. Uh, and then looks throughout the kitchen. Uh, yeah. Maybe for some useful tools. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this time he's going to just see what he can observe with his perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so better than look one. around there. Um, you do see, uh, not all that much as far as stuff you think might be useful in here. Um, the, the main thing, it seems like there's some utensils lying out from, uh, what you assume they were trying to, or it would have been made, set out to prepare for a meal. Um, but it doesn't look like any of the food has actually been taken out for it yet. Um, you do notice a dumb waiter off towards the uh, the south here. Um, that is rather it. It's sort of ornately decorated with a bunch of metal buttons that sort of have. They're not really marked, but you assume they would go to a different room. Mm. Um, it's somewhat small, but you think you might be able to squeeze into it if you. Oh. Will. Boy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so I'm assuming it's open. Oh yeah, you can open the dumb waiter, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, he he peeks in there. Yeah, it is a uh, an empty metal box. Ah, oh, fascinating. Is it clean? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's oh, oh. shockingly clean. Given, I mean, everything in this house seems pristine, like it had been left yesterday. Um, now, Mooney might be slightly under the influence, but he's not dumb. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to go out to the group. I guess back out. Oh, yep. Now mm -hmm. through here. Uh, well, yo, I happen to have stumbled upon what appears to be a dumb waiter that may or may not lead to other levels of the house. Now, me being the Man, a smaller stature that I am, I think I might just be able to squeeze in there um, to do some scouting work for us. But uh, I didn't want to crawl in there and go get myself killed alone, so uh, I figured I might, you know, need you guys to spot me in case something goes south. Well, I doubt you could operate it from the inside. Another valid point. <laughs> but... Regardless, if indeed there is evil on the upper levels, is it wise for you to go off on your own in a way we can't follow? Yeah, then you'd be trapped up there, in a dumb ah. <laughs> And not exactly a whole lot of places to go in a dumb I suppose. Well, then scratch that. <laughs> uh, maybe, hmm. Maybe we can send something up there. And then bring it back down, 
Or maybe that's too much work, and maybe we should just take the stairs and see what's going on. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm open to ideas. I'm going to check this closet before we do anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right you are. I don't see yeah, you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you look around. It appears to be a coat closet. Um, there, you know, there's coats hanging up all over the place. Um, you do notice a top hat sitting on one of the top, the upper shelves. Um, not much else really stands out to you. Um, the wood paneling is very nice. It's sort of ornately carved with images of vines and flowers. Uh, it nice seems like some jackets. sort of a mythological scene um but yeah you don't see you don't see much else i love the leather jackets austin sorry jackets not on the five no uh no no they all seem to be sort of uh very fancy overcoats that you'd wear for bad weather as opposed to the kind of things you're used to wearing gotcha mm. they, these seem like they might be somewhat restricted to fight in ewey <laughs> Well, I guess we should head upstairs now. I think we've checked every room. I do right. believe so. I checked in the kitchen, and sadly, there was no more alcohol to be had. Is that all you were looking for? Uh, no. Uh, 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 no. I was also looking for useful things for our adventure. Ah, I see. Yeah. He looks side to side with his eyes. <laughs> So, uh, so it sounds like you guys head on up the stairs. Um, yeah. Would you like to tell me who's leading the way in this? Who's who's taking charge? It sounds John, like John would lead. John would lead up the stairs. John, John would John's lead. down okay. the danger. So he'll he okay. he doesn't have any cares in the world. <laughs> John's down the danger. Okay. Yeah. Um, would uh would Mooney be sort of going oh, behind yeah. John, yeah. or would he be going? In lay, would he be going further back in the order? Ooh. Mooney might be a ladies first kind of guy. Ladies also first to death to, kind of guy? <laughs> also trying to keep, you know, James distanced from Vela. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. a fair so, uh, Yeah, so uh, it'll be John, Vela, Mooney, and then James. All right. So you guys I just also, carry I, I, on I, I, to the I next can't floor. let that get slide though. That you said ladies first when you're talking about like in order to march into danger. That is not the time you typically do ladies first. Right. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a capable woman. Have you seen the armor on her? <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> All right. So you guys come on up the stairs you're and you enter into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. He is uh, an interesting character. Um, you come into this large, uh, elegantly decorated hall. Uh, over the mantelpiece is a wood-framed portrait of uh, what looks to be a family. Uh, two parents and two smiling children. Um, and you see a, uh, a baby in the father's arms. Terrifying. Uh, you see some suits of armor flanking the doors to either side. Um, they each appear to be sort of holding a spear, and their armor, the head of it, is shaped like that of a wolf. Hmm. Fascinating. Um, you guys do notice that this staircase does go up more. Um, beyond this, but if you guys so wish, you can investigate these rooms as you see fit. Yeah. Uh, John, do you sense any evil on this level? I mean, uh, I, I, what would I roll to sense? I mean, like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, just, just a perception. Okay. <laughs> uh, probably not. Knowing my rolls. Yeah, no. Um. <laughs> I mean, the suits kind of seem a little bit wary to you. Like, they like the, they look like they're not... Friendly. A good person doesn't make armor like this. 
Uh, but uh, you don't see anything that you would actively indicate as a possible threat. What hell? I feel like we should investigate the rooms. What if there's valuables in there? It could be something that could help us. That is true. Yeah. That's now, what I in this specific scenario, I don't know if we should split up or not, or investigate the rooms altogether, on account of the fact that we don't really know what's in any of these rooms. That's fair. I also don't know if I trust any of you to be in the same room with you alone. Fair she enough. just meet you <laughs> an hour ago. If and that. I feel like we're already great friends. <laughs> I feel like we're solid acquaintances. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I'm gonna look in this first room. Alright, lead the way. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, uh, Vela will sort of uh, stay somewhat nearby, but she does appear to be uh, respecting your space. Uh, Mooney slips by Vela <laughs> and into the room as well. Uh, wh wh where are we? Am I looking uh, you see that you open up into a library. Um, a very... Um, it's maybe not like the largest library you've ever seen, but it does seem to have uh, books sort of s stuffed pretty much everywhere on the shelves. Uh, very densely packed there's really no wiggle room in the actual shelves themselves. Um, hmm. There's a desk right near where you are, John. It has sort of an oil lamp, a uh, jar of ink. Yeah, I rolled to see what was like at the desk, and I got a 13, so I assume I don't yeah. find anything valuable or anything special. I find, um, you know, I find that oil lamp and that pen. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, you don't quite see anything um i would say with that um you do open up one of the the drawers to the uh to the desk and you do find what appears to be an iron key Ooh, a key yeah i found a key i guess i'll hold you on to this right. put it yeah, on my person would be I useful. Would. uh I'm going to look through the bookshelves of this here library, as Mooney is very much a reading man. Uh... Eh? <laughs> yeah, um... So, with that, uh, you look over the books. Are you looking for anything in particular? Or are you just looking at the books in general? I am looking for anything that might be, you know, sticking out to me in, in relation to, you know... Wolves and evil. <laughs> um, so you don't find anything that particularly matches that. Um, you do find a couple of books about philosophy and history. Oh, um, philosophy. Some maintaining to poetry and fiction works. Um, you do find one fiction work that appears to be labeled um, The Ballad of the Wolf King. Hmm. Fascinating. Um, he scrolls through it. Yeah. Um, it appears to tell the story of a man who was cursed to become a wolf due to an error he'd made in his past. Um, but through the course of the story, uh, it sort of goes over the, the man coming to terms with that wolfish side of himself and choosing instead to embrace that and becomes uh, their king. Ah, fascinating. I'm going to share this discovery with uh, John. Uh, well, it's not exactly, you know... John the, sees, the Holy the, Grail. sees the title and says, I hate books, and walks out of the room. Uh, uh, fair enough. Uh, Mooney follows out uh, and relays his discovery to the rest of the group. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, you you will notice uh, at this point that James is not in the room with you guys. Oh, huh. um, 
you're you're not sure where he's gone off to, but John, you can see uh, through the doorway that he appears to be looking through one of the chests at the foot of these beds. I walk in on him. Mm -hmm. Is this room still dark? Um, Uh, it, it's showing up dark for you? Yeah. All the other rooms mm. worked when I went in them, but this one did not. Oh, that's weird. Let me see. Is it light now? No. Oh, uh, yeah. That's why. You don't have dark vision. Oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I walk in um, and go, this room's dark, that, and I walk out. Yeah, that, that room does not have any, <laughs> uh, any light in it. Um, he does have dark vision. Fair. So. Mm. He, uh, is that's cool unaffected that. by that. <laughs> dark vision works like that in this... Actually yeah, yeah, you can select uh, if a token does or does not have dark vision. Um, nice. But yeah, he's sort of looking through that. He comes out a little bit later uh, and just kind of shrugs and is like, yeah, there wasn't anything in there. I give him the most hmm. suspicious eyes ever. <laughs> I do not it's trust like, what he said. He and... sort of like, he, he gestures to the door. You want to light a torch and go check? I'll, I'll trust you. Well, yeah. All right. Fair enough. So now. Unless you're interested in a bunch of servants' uniforms, there's nothing in there. Are they cute servants' uniforms? What? what? <laughs> nothing. Yeah. All right. Well, ignore that. I go into the next room. Only other one room to check. <laughs> and I follow in after. <laughs> Hold yeah. up. We're not supposed to split the party. Oh, hey. Music. Um, yeah, so you guys enter into a large, um, what appears to be maybe a... Uh... I play the piano. <laughs> oh, super. Oh, you, you um, play the piano. <laughs> yeah, you, you assume it's a music room. Um, you guys are surprised when John sits down at the piano and it seems like something almost comes over him. And he just starts playing this sort of almost haunting piano tune, just almost on autopilot. His fingers just moving across the keys, his eyes closed. And when the song stops, he raises his hands and his eyes open and kind of like looks around for a second. I was planning on playing you a pub ditty, but I guess I won't. Hey. That was, uh, fascinating. Would you care to enlighten us as to what that whole thing was, jo well, uh, James? <laughs> I will, maybe. I do an arcana check on the piano, because I am very confused on mm -hmm. why I didn't play the pub ditty I was planning on playing. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, um, it was John that played that. Yes. Yes. Okay. James um, is not yeah, coming into the rooms with us. James is mm -hmm. not like us. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so you look over the piano, you're sort of examining it, trying to get any sort of uh, arcanic read off of it, um, but you don't sense anything magical about the piano itself. Instead, the air around you seems to be saturated with some kind of magic you can't quite understand. Fascinating. Or at least you, you don't currently have... Like, it's right at the tip of your tongue, but you don't quite have a word for it. Um, it seems to sort of... Now that you're noticing it, it seems to pervade the entire house, just sort of hanging in the air. Mm. This house is quite magical. That was not what As I planned Sean to play. Just... <laughs> Mooney is investigating the, uh, what I'm assuming is a harp? Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, and he goes to pluck a string, and oopsies, he plays the harp. That's perception. Um, that was perception. Oh, that was perception. Oopsies, mm. he still yeah. kind of plays the harp. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, so you go over there, and again, as you sort of reach for the strings, uh -oh. you start <laughs> plucking out a melody that seems to match almost note for note with what John played. Uh, Mooney and... immediately steps away. Well, that was spooky. Uh, I guess this, uh, this house is haunted after all. <laughs> Uh, seems that way. I don't like this room. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't know if I've ever been possessed before, but that definitely felt like the closest thing to it. 
there was clearly something going on. And whatever oh. it was, it couldn't have possibly been good. Well, we've searched every room on this floor. Time to go upstairs, I assume. Indeed we have. Alright. So you guys carry on ahead up the stairs. Is it same marching order? Oh, yeah. Okay. Alright, cool. So I'm just gonna adjust you guys into there. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and up we go. Up oh, indeed. Okay, so you guys come up to the balcony of the third floor. You open up into what appears to be sort of the end of this uh, marble staircase that you've been climbing. Uh, and it seems this is the first place you've encountered that looks aged. It's dusty and covered in cobwebs. I assume I need to light a torch because I see nothing but black. Um, yeah, it does appear that there are no active lights in this place. Is there a way? So if... How do I do that? You, no, that's a uh, you can just, if you have a torch, you can just use that. You can use, um, I believe it's considered a, uh, a uh, an item interaction to light a torch. Um, but yeah, it, so long as you have torches, you're good. You can light I them. do have a torch, so let me see how do I, I also have a torch if you'd like to use it. <laughs> yep, so you can absolutely light that torch. I am going to go ahead and give you some light. So, uh, Torch sheds bright light in 20 feet, correct? Uh, 10, oh, wait, no. 20 feet, yes. 20 foot yeah. radius. Okay. And then the low light, then, another yeah, 20 bright feet? bright light for 20 feet, then dim light for 20 more. Okay. It right. also does one fire damage. There you go. Use it as a melee weapon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you are now shedding light. You should be able to cool. see yes. what's Thank going you. on, John. Um, yeah, so... You carry on up the stairs. I assume you guys are all following. Um, stop, John. Oh, I was just going. You... I was just moving out of the way. No. Nope. So, like, they could come oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, stop right there. Okay. Sorry. Um, oh, criminal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because uh, what about here? immediately, uh oh, the armor here is going to come to life and uh, attack you. That yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, tracks. Do we want to roll an initiative or? Yes, we are rolling initiative. Okay. It is going to get a surprise round off. Makes sense. Uh, be sure to click your token before rolling initiative. Ah. But that was a great roll. Yeah, we can adjust it to be that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I really would hate to not get my 22 roll I got. <laughs> you sure you don't want 8? The 4? No, I don't want 4. I want my 22 I rolled. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been brutal. Yeah, I think I should re-roll, too. <laughs> no, but I actually rolled. It's there. They can see it in the video. It's there. <laughs> All right. So, at the top of the initiative order, it is going to be you, John. Let me just adjust that to that 22. All right. Darn it, the armor moves before I do. And let me go ahead and... Switch up the music. No. Oh. Ah. This is our fight song now. He just plays like the Oklahoma fight song. Just starts playing. And you're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh oh, that's copyright. <laughs> All right. So, John, it is your turn. This thing, or attack. actually, it's going yeah, to attack you right? first. Um, I don't know why I'm telling yeah. you that. You, I mean, no, I go yeah. first. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> no, I, I was, uh, I was already factoring in the attack, um, but I was factoring it as if it wasn't its own turn. Gotcha. Um, but it is going to go ahead and hit you, or try to, um, and it is going to hit your AC um, for six bludgeoning damage. Oh yeah. Hey, that's yeah, I don't like really that. bad. I don't... <laughs> Here? 
Um, if you click on yourself and you go up to the uh, the blue circle, and then you click in that the space above it, you can just do minus six, and it will automatically do the math. Well, I think green is my health, not blue. Yeah, green. The green is your health, yes. So, so you just ignore the uh, cool. the red circle is yeah. irrelevant to you currently. Suddenly, um, you were bloody. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it smacks into you with this iron cool. fist and knocks you backwards into the wall. You're kind of immediately oh! sort of cracked ribs from where it hit. Your breathing is heavy, and this thing is just towering over to you. Over you. What do you do? Uh, cry? Uh, <laughs> fall, fall back? Yeah, a fall bit. back. I, I'm scared. Okay, uh, um... So hard. I will say, I will say with that. Oh, is he getting attacked? Are you disengaging? <laughs> are you disengaging? Yes, I'll disengage. That means I have to okay. move, right? Good. Yeah. No, disengage means that you use your action, or okay. if you have, I don't think you have it yet, but rogues do gain um, disengage as a bonus action. Yeah, I don't have that yet, so I will disengage as my yeah. action and then retreat. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so you still have, uh, you still have your bonus action. I don't know if I have um, a bonus action. You probably don't at this yeah. point in time. Yeah, well, level one, you probably don't. <laughs> you you can probably only do it as part of two weapon fighting. I do have two weapon fighting. Yeah, you just would have to hit. Yeah, but I don't want to fight him yeah, right you, now because I'm scared of him. I don't want to be near him. <laughs> fair. That is absolutely fair. Um, all right, so James's turn. Um, he kind of comes up the stairs a little bit and sees what you were running away from so injured. He's like, okay, that's new. Uh, and he is going to go ahead and try to shoot it with an Eldritch Blast. Uh, and he is, unfortunately, he doesn't quite hit where he was trying to. It kind of hits the armor and kind of shoots off uh, and just makes a hole in the actual, uh, in the, the wood paneling of the wall. I don't love that. Uh, the armor is going to move forward, uh, moving right up to where Vela is, and it is going to try to attack her. Um, it all. unfortunately does miss its attack. She manages to raise her shield in time, and it clanks off of that. Mooney. Oh, it's my turn. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do much of anything in this tight of a space. Um, you I are do... small, so you can move... Uh, well, you can move through an ally's space regardless. Okay. Um, just so long as you don't end your turn there. So if, if you moved forward into Vela's space to make an attack on it, you would have to either move back or move forward. Um, if you moved back, obviously it would get knocked opportunity attack on you. So that I have to attack and then move back? If you so chose to move back. You could also move anywhere else around it. Um, I would say you can make this gap here um, between where Vela is and this square. Um, just based on your own small Size. stature. Yeah. Ooh. Eesh. Yeah. So you can go there. You just, uh, if you left within five feet of the the monster, it would make an attack on you. Mm. All right. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, oh, what are you doing? It's been a good run, guys. Uh, well, I'm going to use my quarterstaff to make an attack. Okay. Uh, let's see... 17. Um, that is unfortunately not going to be enough to hit. You're going to clang off of the armor. Oh, oh, I guess to be fair, the armor's AC being high does kind of make sense. Yes. <laughs> and being the monk that I am, I am going to attempt to hit it with my bare hand. <laughs> All right. Martial arts. Heck yes. <laughs> I prepare a fall strike. Go for strike. that unarmed strike. Oh, God. Come help. on. <laughs> Come on. 
Oh, yeah. You you drive your fist up. You hit a chink in its armor. Go ahead and roll damage. All right. So it's going to be 1d4 plus 3. Cool. <laughs> Solid. So that's 6. <laughs> nice. Hey, I mean, you we got have, it. Like, we have hurt the armor now. So exactly. Much damage, that's how much damage it, it did to me. damage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're evenly matched. Uh, yeah, the four of us are evenly matched with him. <laughs> oh. All right, now it's Velia's turn. Oh. Yep. God. All right, so, uh, yeah, she is definitely going to sort of focus on this new threat that has appeared. Um, and she is going to... Uh, she doesn't quite want to fight up the stairs... So she's going to attempt to shove it back. Fair. Uh, so enjoy the prospect of fighting on the stairs. That is going to be an athletics. We'll see if she rolls better than it does. Uh, unfortunately, no. She sort of tries to ram her shield into it, but it holds steady. Uh, it's not budging easily. Darn this haunted armor. John. Um, huh. I want to... Pull out that hand crossbow. <laughs> but she's in my way, though. No, you can shoot through allies. Alright, then I guess yeah, I'll, shoot. I'll shoot with the hand crossbow. Or I'll try yeah. to. Um, you yeah. honestly could have shot it from where you were. Oh, okay. It wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah, yeah it doesn't make a difference. I'd like a good angle on that. <clears throat> um, yeah, go ahead and roll to hit. Let's roll to hit, and I miss. Yeah, unfortunately, um, you're not quite used to the weightage of this crossbow. You kind of line it up to fire, and you shoot, but it... Ding! And shoots off of the armor. So I have a hand crossbow, and I have two hand fighting... Can I throw a dagger at it? Um, or would that not yeah, happen? I would say if if you were wielding the dagger in your other hand, which I assume you would have been, um, you could definitely use that as your bonus action. Okay. Yay. Yeah, you hit it. You <laughs> throw your dagger. You're much more used to the weight of the daggers. It seems like it flies much better. Um, it hits into sort of a chink in the... Uh, the gap between where the the helm and the actual chest plate connect uh and oh was that a oh, okay oh yeah um you hey, don't have the sneak attack damage uh, um, shouldn't i though because i'm within five feet of john because he's in five, um, five feet of my enemy is... uh, or my, my oh wait yeah 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 let me read, yeah. Let me read to you. yeah no it is, it is within, within yeah five it yeah. is within five feet of an enemy yep Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I was getting it confused with the, uh, with, like, the swashbuckler version of it. Where you specifically needed to be alone for it. <laughs> Which is just weird. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. it's whatever. So I actually did all nine damage, hypothetically? Ooh. Yep. Good. You're gonna need to get that dagger back after. Yeah, I'll get after. But hey, I have another one. That is true. All right, uh, James is going to look hey, over. At, he sort of hey. look over appraisingly at you. He's like, "Nice throw." Thanks. Uh, and he is going to uh, go ahead and put a a hand on your shoulder, and you are going to. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, so you are going to... Alright, well, that's unfortunate. But... Yeah, so you are going to gain back 2 HP. Woo! Hey, you're not bloodied anymore. That's true. Barely. And then for his action, he is going to shoot another blast at the uh, armor. All right, and he hits it. Thank goodness. And he min rolls. 
Aww. Yay, <laughs> yeah. All right, the armor's turn. All right. So the armor, uh, you do seem, if you're not 100% sure, because it's kind of hard to get a read on something that doesn't have a face, but it does seem to be moving almost more desperately. Oh. Um, ah. It is going to make an attack on Vela. I'm just a small unassuming villain. Um, which, unfortunately, it is going to miss. Vale is able to get her shield up in time. And then it's going to make another attack. Huh? Um, Mooney. Huh? Uh-oh. Uh, ooh, no. <laughs> um, it hits you uh, oh. for six bludgeoning damage. I don't love that at all. I'll be honest. Apparently, the thing can only hit for six damage. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that max damage? Because it feels like max damage. Uh, no. Oh, good. That is Great. not max damage. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Mooney. Yeah. Mooney, oh, you know, wipes some blood that d dribbles from his mouth. Mm. And he takes his quarter staff and he goes for a whap and... Uh, yeah, you go for a whap, your quarter staff... Ding, and it kind of rattles you for a little bit, but you don't I'm quite hit it in a place that seems to do anything. <laughs> And then he draws back his quarterstaff and goes in for another palm strike. Yep. Oh. Yeah, you, this time you, you try aiming for the same spot, but it seems like it's expecting it this time, and it kind of catches your fist, and you kind of just hit hard metal. <laughs> okay, my body's right. prepared for these kinds of things. Vela, uh, she is going to, uh, she's pretty certain that this thing is too strong to be able to just shove it aside so she is going to actually just try to attack it with her war hammer that's fair um she sort of swings it overhand the thing is able to kind of block it with its arm and again metal rings in the air this thing's ac is too high <laughs> it is armor <laughs> it is a, a it is it's standing piece of armor, armor. <laughs> Yeah. It is just oh, AC. Right. Yeah. John. Well, um, I need to, I guess, uh, draw my other dagger. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, your other dagger is currently somewhere within the armor. No, no, yeah. Yeah. But... yeah. No, I just want you to be aware of yeah, that, no. that fact. <laughs> yeah, no, I only have one dagger right now. It's great. Yep. It's mm -hmm. the best. It's the coolest. So is that drawing going to like count as one of my attacks, or will I still be able to use the crossbow? Um, no, that's a free object interaction. You can have okay. one of you have one of those per turn. Okay, cool. Or per round. Then I'm, I'm going to start with the dagger because it worked last time, and my brain goes, "That's that's what I need to do." So okay. I'll do that. Yeah. Go ahead and try to throw it. And I miss. Um, yeah, you throw it. It clings off the armor and kind of. Uh, it does kind of clatter off, and it kind of lands on the ground over mm -hmm. by where Moon ah. is. <laughs> All right. Well, now I'll try to, I guess, shoot the crossbow uh, again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bonus action, shoot the crossbow. Shoot that crossbow! I'm um, yeah, again, Bad you aim, fire, ding, and it sails off, embeds itself into some of the uh, paneling. Well, Austin, it's been great dying to the first um, enemy we I fought. Accident. <laughs> yeah, CJ kept talking about, if we continue, he didn't, I thought, you know, he just, maybe we weren't going to enjoy it. No, he meant we're going to die in episode one. <laughs> it is called Death House. <laughs> it isn't uh, live and have a whole bunch of cool fights. Yeah. <laughs> it is Death um, House. Yeah, so James is going to go ahead and... Let me just double check. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready for this thing to roll a critical failure. <laughs> yeah, he is going to just uh, go ahead and shoot another blast at it. Makes sense. Fair. Makes now, sense. if it ain't broke, um, again, though, dings I mean, off of the armor, broke. He sails off. Once, but, you know. He has only hit once, and it was min damage, yeah. so... Yep. Um, the armor uh, is uh, well. Let's make this public. Yeah. yeah what is what is the armor? All right. Doing? One, it attacks Mooney. Two, 
It attacks Vale. <laughs> yep. Mooney. Uh -oh. That tracks. It was nice meeting uh -huh. you, Mooney. Uh, it is going to hit you for eight bludgeoning damage. Uh, is it going to hit me? <laughs> How does uh, it it, it's got, it, it, it rolled a 19. Oh! I think it hits you. Uh, oh, I think it might hit you. So, yeah, uh, it, dead, so you are now I'm unconscious. Like does, yeah. my, <laughs> does my unconscious friend still count for my sneak attack? <laughs> no. I know, no, but I still unfortunately, have, yeah. I still have I gotta be an life. active combatant. <laughs> uh, so now I have to make a death save roll, right? Uh, nope. No, oh. not this turn. Your next turn. Um, wow. Well, actually, no, it's right after the animated armor. Um, but now that you are down, it's going to make its second attack against Vela. Gotcha. Um, which it unfortunately misses. It rolled an eight. <laughs> it would be awesome if it didn't roll that <laughs> if eight. that was backward. Oh, yeah. that so that. much better. Uh, okay, next week now for Austin Mooney, playing with um, we will go ahead and we'll take that 19 since you already All rolled right. it. So you have one Got success. Woohoo! All right, Vela, uh, looking at you, now down on the ground, uh, she is going to uh, go ahead and try to do whatever she can to finish this thing off. Uh, she is going to attack it with her Warhammer. And she is going to hit it. Thank goodness. Yeah, she goes in for a swing and kind of dents the metal. Yay! Ooh. John. You're up, pal. Cool. Well, I don't have any daggers left, so I guess I'll just shoot it once with my crossbow. <laughs> okay. Hey, if you ever find a secondhand crossbow. It's true. Ah! You, hey. you have a light crossbow. I have a light I mean, crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you could have stayed there and shot at it, too. All right, let's roll yeah, but damage. then I wouldn't get two attacks. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, that hits. Roll damage. Woo. Yeah, and you get that sneak attack. That is some nice damage. Yay. Um, the bolt, you're not sure, you're not quite sure how, but, like, for some reason, it, like, goes into the, the holes in the face mask, and for some reason, that really seems to bother the armor. Oh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, James is going to uh, look... Um, this thing seems to be very, very much staggering right now. It seems very bloodied at this point in time. Um, he is going to try to make a blast to finish it off. Um, only hit and so far, he, but... he is going to hit. Oh Whoa. my gosh. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and he knocks it out. The Yay. blast hits it square in the chest and the pieces of the suit shatter to the ground and crumble to pieces. Does my dagger fall when it crumbles to pieces? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's it's in the... Uh, gotcha. It's in that area. I'm gonna go collect It's just kind of underneath the armor. And um, my yeah. three crossbow bolts, or are they damaged and gone? Um, I would say with the... The one that hit seemed to survive, the other two okay. seemed to be damaged. So I have 18... Yeah. All right. And uh, with this, Vela goes over to you, Mooney. Um, and she's going to rest a hand on you. And you see, uh, John, you see a golden light sort of oh. come from her hand. Uh, and she is going to give you uh, one of her lay on hands. Ah, she's a paladin. Uh, <laughs> so you are going to get one HP back, which will get you back up. And uh, uh, when when you're sort of getting on your feet, she's like, I would suggest that we get to the lower levels. Uh, you'll need that, time to recover. That is a wonderful idea. Who would have thought that a giant suit of metal could punch so hard? <clears throat> I raise my hand. Fair enough, and he takes a swig of his his whiskey from his flask. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, wait, where do you guys go to? I'm gonna stagger back downstairs to where those beds were. Okay. So you want to go down to the second floor? Yeah. 
Okay. Better. Yep, so you guys go down onto the second floor. Uh, and Vela kind of stands near the door uh, and kind of like ushers you guys in. Um, How you, can I still you not need... see this room? This room hates uh, uh, It's because this token doesn't have the uh, the light oh, on yet. Okay. This, this, yep, I, just, just... I can't see in this room. I keep my eyes closed when I walk in. Yeah, it's immune to you. Ah. There you go. Now you can see. Alright. Um, yeah, so I assume you both go in, um, and she's going to kind of keep watch. Um, you do see James kind of go off, uh, seemingly into the room right beside you guys. Uh. The library? And, uh, yeah, into the library. Um, and so do you guys take a short rest? Sure. Yeah. Okay. How does short rest work again? Um, I always forget. Yep, so oh, short right. rest I... is usually around, like, half an hour to an hour. Um, there's certain things that you regain on a short rest. It'll let you know on the actual ability itself if you do gain it back. Um, but otherwise, you get to roll your hit dice. Gotcha. You can roll a maximum of all of your hit dice. But since you are level one, you have one. <laughs> one hit um, die. Um, yep, so you gain back four HP there, Mooney. Where hit die? Woo! Dude, I um, know your... I can't remember where I do it. Yeah, uh, your hit die, um, since you're on D&D Beyond, uh, it's going to be, if you actually just click the option that says short rest, um, you can select where it says roll hit die. Oh, look at that. Ah. Cool. All right, I'm and you gain, you are back at full. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wish I did that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm at 5 HP. Oh, fun. Yeah. Pretty cool. Alright. I'm gonna search these little chests that's at the end of the bed that I was sleeping in. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead and give me... I would say this isn't gonna interrupt a uh, short rest, so if you want to just give me a perception or investigation check. Woo! Yep, you go through them, and it seems like the one that was at the foot of John's bed was empty. Um, the one that you have at the foot of yours seems to be uh, just like a set of shoes, uh, a folded up uh, outfit that you assume belonged to one of the servants. Uh, you do see an unlit candle lying near the bottom. Uh, hmm. Nothing really stands out to you as all that uh, useful in your current situation. Fair enough. All right. Well, I'm going to head back out now that I've taken my short rest. Yeah. I'm going to stop and look at this closet on my way out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you look into that, and yeah. it seems like there's more uh, more of those uh, servant uniforms in there. Gotcha. Um, it seems like these probably were like extra outfits, since you only see two beds in here. You assume that these servants had multiple different outfits that they kind of cycled between between washes. All right. Well. Uh, uh, yep. Go ahead. Suppose we should continue our uh, little escapade here. <laughs> uh, Vila kind of looks over at you and she's like, "You're still wounded far more than I'd wish." And. Uh, Far more than I'd wish as well. I pat him on the back and say, he'll be fine. Uh, she'll she'll kind of uh, touch you, Mooney, um, and she's going to give you back uh, two more HP. Woo! I'm not bloodied anymore. Woo! Not bloodied crew. I mean, I'm just full health, but say, not bloodied. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so as a... Uh, as you guys are sort of doing this, John, out of the corner of your eye, you do see James kind of like looking around in the the actual uh, library here, um, sort of with a puzzled expression on his face. I want to like stealth up to the door and hope he doesn't see me to try to like listen to what he's doing. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth check. Stealth and I'll see you then. I have a plus seven here. Should be good, hopefully. All right. There we go. There we go. Um, yeah, you go ahead and you sneak right over by the door. 
Um, you can see that he's looking around at the shelves. He seems sort of, uh, kind of almost staring off into space for a moment. And then you see that sort of a golden flicker behind his eyes again. And he kind of nods and he goes over to this bookshelf here. Um, and he kind of runs his hand along it and you see almost like a flicker of golden light again. And he pulls out one of the books and you see a door open in this wall. That walk in. <laughs> uh, and he, he looks over at you and he's like, well, apparently there was a secret room here. Yeah. How, how did you find that? Uh, well... Well, the lady. Ah, uh, yes, the, the lady. Don't quite know what she is. Claims she's an angel. Don't really believe in angels, but... Fair. Yeah, me neither. But, you know, when... A winged thing descends from above telling you... It can help you get your soul back, you, you listen. I wouldn't want to argue with that. Uh, he kind of leans back against the uh, the window over here, and he kind of gestures on, like, you want to take a look inside? You're more than welcome. I call for the rest of the people so they come, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sort of look around and like, oh, there was a hidden door. Them um, in here. um yeah so if you want to go ahead and do that absolutely all right oh, time again. oh wow <sighs> yeah so you look around you see bookshelves packed with tomes describing fiend summoning rituals hmm. and necromantic cult uh symbols various different rituals of summoning the dead hmm. Uh, and seemingly rituals of a cult called the Priests of Osmus, you assume? You're not 100% sure. It's a, the, the script is a little bit weird. Um, you sort of look around. Um, you do see a heavy wooden chest uh, that's standing against the wall there with its lid half closed. Sticking out of the chest is a skeleton that seems to be wearing leather armor. Um, as you sort of look over it more closely, you see that it's a human who seems to have triggered a poison dart trap. Oh. There's several different darts stuck into the armor and the rib cage of this person. Um, but it seems like whatever had originally fired the darts is no longer functional. Okay. In the left hand of the skeleton, you find a note bearing a strange seal you don't recognize. Okay. Do you open it and take a look? Yeah, sure. Okay. You come across this letter. My most pathetic servant. I'm not a messiah sent to you by the dark powers of this land. I've not come to lead you on a path to immortality. However many souls you have bled on your hidden altar, however many visitors you've tortured in your dungeon, know that you're not the only ones who brought me to this beautiful land. You are but worms writhing in my earth. You say that you are cursed. Your fortune spent, your abandoned love for madness took solace in the bosom of another woman and sired a stillborn son. Cursed by darkness, of that I have no doubt. Save you from your wretchedness? I think not. I much prefer you as you are. Your dread lord and master, Strahd von Zarovich. Hmm. I found a letter. I show it to oh. the party. Yeah. 
That's an ominous letter. Just a little bit. Uh, Rod. Ooh. <laughs> the lady recognizes that name. That's the thing I'm here for. Hmm. Strahd? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Vampire who rules this town like he's a god. Vampire, you say? Fun. Yeah. He's no joke. I would uh, assume not. Anybody who signs their letters with, you know, your dread lord and master, I can't assume is too nice of a guy. <laughs> I mean, well, I haven't had the personal displeasure, but I haven't heard good things. I mean, not many people get trapped in a demi plane. Hmm. True. <laughs> Um, as John, as you're going through the chest, mm -hmm. um, you do see a couple of other things. Oh, um, nice. you oh, find three blank black books with leather covers. Uh, you do find three, uh, spell scrolls. Oh. Um, they appear to be, uh, illegible to you. Um, so you're not a hundred percent sure what they're supposed to be, but they, you can tell enough to tell that they are, uh, that they are spell scrolls. <laughs> they are um, magic in nature. They do see. They seem magical. Yes. Um, do you, you know do the find... languages I speak? Um, it's irrelevant. Okay. Just want to make sure. uh, spell scrolls. Do... You can't read them unless you know you gotcha. can cast the spell. It's that under makes sense. Last I'm, list, so I'm not a magic uh, user. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. You find uh, what appears to be the deed to the house, oh. uh, the deed to a windmill, and a signed will. Um, the windmill, you don't, you don't think that's in this area, at least according to what the, uh, the deed seems to say, mm -hmm. um, but the will seems to be signed by a Gustav and Elizabeth Durst, uh, and bequeaths the house, the windmill, and all other family property to Rosvalda and Thornbolt Durst in the event of their parents' death. I walk out and drop everything on the desk to show everyone everything I found. Yeah. Group meeting. Uh, well, that's certainly not ominous at all. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Whenever there's a trapped chest, it's usually not a good sign. That's fair. If only the man who yeah. broke into that chest the first time was as good a thief as I am, and maybe he'd still be here to talk about it. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe I would have died. I'm glad he died, not me. As am I. That's just the luck of an adventurer for you. Sometimes you'll be the one who triggers the trap. Sometimes you're cleaning up after the sorry fool who did. I think he's actually quite lucky to be dead, honestly. All well, things considered in this area? Yeah, probably. Alright. So we've got these three empty books. But wait, they're empty? They're blank. Three black blank books. Right? Ah. Have we opened them? <laughs> oh. Yes, you have opened them. Okay. They are blank. Okay. I was like, I thought so. I thought that's what it meant yeah. when he said that, but... you, Yeah, you would guess based on looking at them that these are just books that have not either been filled in or maybe they were going to be used as journals. You're not 100% sure. Hmm. Um, but you do see... Um, go ahead and give me... Uh, what would be the best here? Go ahead and just give me... Uh, and right. Mm, kind of, but uh, go ahead and just give me a perception or investigation check. Investigation right. it is. Um, yeah, you look them over, um, and they are very nicely made. You would guess they're probably worth about 25 gold apiece. Woo! Those are some nice notebooks. I, I, uh, I take one of them and put them in my bag. 
And I'll also take one of them. All right. Uh, Is no one else grabbing for them? Because if not, I'm taking the second, no. the third one. <laughs> Uh, if if you guys reach for two of them and you leave one there, James is going to okay. grab the other one. I assumed one. so, but I just wanted to... Make sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make sense. All right. So, where do you want to go now? Well, I ask, first I ask our two magic users if either of them can read the spell scrolls. Uh, Vela kind of looks over and she's like, no, I can't quite cast spells. Mm. Um, and she looks over at James and he's like, don't look at me. This, well, the lady can tell this is divine magic. Not exactly my wheelhouse. Fair enough. Oh. Well, I suppose we should uh, carry on then, now that we found our lovely secret room. Yeah, probably best. All right, we'll... Uh... You're feeling well enough to climb? Eh, you know, as well as I'm going to feel in the near future. (laughs) Well, that's all we can hope for. Though I fear we may have to end up spending the night in this wretched place. Eh, I'm getting that feeling myself. Fortunately. If we make it through the night. (laughs) Oh, now that's the realistic optimism. (laughs) You know, I'm starting to like you. You actually speak sense. Thanks. I mean, we're about um, yeah. ten minutes earlier than we normally would, but I feel like that's probably the best stop place we're going to yeah, have. For the this next is 10 yeah, this is the uh, the best place we can really yeah. choose to stop off at this point in time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sure. that was the introduction to Death House. You guys got a fight in, did yeah. some exploring, did, did fun, a lot fun. of exploring. Yep, mostly exploring, but as is the nature of just starting out. If I put you guys into constant combats immediately, you'd all be dead. <laughs> yeah, as is evidenced by the single suit of armor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> can't wait for that next yeah. room where there's two suits of armor and we all die. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> well, this suit, this room has four suits of armor. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> And we become level three before those become living suits of armor. Yeah. And what's that? We find Maybe. bottles of experience? <laughs> you find bottles of enchanting and you just throw them at your feet? Oh, cool. I'm level 12 now? Whoa. Crazy. Oopsie. Whoa. Uh, but yeah. yeah, this has been the first episode of... Uh, High School Musical High School 3. High School Musical 3 Revengeance. Revengeance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's definitely working, the name working on we'll, that title. It's definitely the name we'll have next week. Yeah, absolutely. Without question, we will workshop it. We'll... Yeah, <laughs> we'll tune in next week to find out yeah. what you're watching. Yeah, exactly. I've been awesome. We're, we're still waiting to figure out what it is, yeah. too. So. It's crazy. <laughs> um, if you want to, you know, if yeah. you want to tweet about it, use hashtag Untitled D&D Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't have an audience that wants to tweet? That's fair. Uh, then don't worry about it. It Next. happens, um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. That uh, was I've been John fun. Bloodstone, yeah. joined by Mooney Sanders and the Dungeon Master. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Oh, spoopy. Bye-bye. <laughs> right. Catch y'all later now.